Welcome to the Shepherd's Pie, a slice of hope to raise faithful kids, where we focus on topics that impact young people today. I'm Antony Barone Kolenk. I'm a father of five who served in the Air Force for 21 years. I'm now a law professor and a columnist for Practical Homeschooling Magazine. I'm also the author of The Harwood Mysteries, an inspirational medieval fiction series for kids aged 10 and up. Here on The Shepherd's Pie, we want to inform, inspire, and help you to raise happy, healthy, faithful kids, whether you're a youth minister, a parent, a teacher, anyone. In today's episode, we'll discuss how you can reach out to young people and encourage them in the faith when they leave the nest, leave your parish, leave your youth group, and head off to college. My guest is Bill Snyder, a youth minister, teacher, and the founder of Patchwork Heart Ministry, which has a special outreach to students who've gone off to college. In the entertainment review segment of the show, I look at the hit biblical series about the life of Jesus called The Chosen, and I review Christmas with the Chosen, a special holiday movie event that was released in theaters through Fathom Events. Sometimes it seems that getting kids through high school while still having them attend church or go to youth group is a major accomplishment for parents and youth ministers and pastors. Some people focus on the externals, such as receiving sacraments like the Sacrament of Confirmation, which is often done in the teen years. Some might focus on youth group, having kids continue to go to youth groups or pro-life marches. And the idea seems to be if we could just get them through high school in one piece, that they'll be all right. We'll have given them the right foundation for them to go off to college. I know with five kids of my own, it sometimes felt like that in our family. We wanted to make sure that we gave our kids the best start in life. Obviously, we don't want them to get in trouble or go to jail. We want them to get good grades and all that. We want them to be good kids with good values. And we just wanted them to learn about the faith as they were growing up. And to be able to say we got them over the finish line when they graduated from high school. I know my own life growing up, going to youth group, I was very involved with several youth groups and it had a major impact on my life. I had a lot of friends in those groups who also seemed to really have their faith impacted in a positive way and seemed like they were going to grow up and do great things for God. And some of them did go on and do great things for God. Some of them lost their faith. Some of them might still be wandering off the path. And it really begs the question of what do we do with our youth when they go off to college and they get out of the little bubble of their youth group or their high school or their parish community and now they have to face all that the world throws at them, whether it be drugs, sex, alcohol, atheism, political activism, whatever the case may be. How do we, as parents or youth ministers or pastors, reach out to them when they're at college and try to support them in their faith? Well, in our interview segment today, Bill Snyder speaks with me about his experiences as a youth minister and his special outreach to college students known as Patchwork Heart Ministry. And we talk about how to encourage faith when kids go off to college and how to keep them involved in the faith when they come home for the summer or even for the Christmas holidays. I have with me today Bill Snyder, who is the founder of Patchwork Heart Ministry, which is a nonprofit Catholic young adult ministry. For over a dozen years, he's been an active member in the Catholic Charismatic Renewal. He's also a TV radio guy with a TV radio production degree from the University of Scranton, also a youth minister teacher and a speaker. Bill, it is a pleasure to have you on the show. Tony, man, it's so great to be with you on Shepherd's Pie. Thank you so very much for having me. You hit an area with your college ministry, which I think is so incredibly important because as so many of us know, our kids go off and go to college and then lose their faith. So why don't you give us your background first? I say I'm a cradle Catholic. And in addition to that, I have really always had a passion for young adults youth ministry because I was in a great youth ministry program myself. And I knew that the Lord just wanted me to be a part 
of youth ministry and of college ministry. And so I went off to school. I double majored theology and also communications. I was a youth minister for about 10 years. And there was one question throughout it all for me. What happens when these kids go off to college? So often, students were confirmed uh, at the age of 16, which ends up being a junior in high school. And so many seniors just never came back to the program. You know, well, what do we offer for seniors? Well, we offer Steubenville trips and we offer this and we offer that. And, and, and it sounds so bad that confirmation was a rubber stamp in their faith journey. This, this one question burned on my heart. How do we keep these kids from falling away? And I didn't necessarily have the answer when I was a youth minister. I left parish work about a year and a half ago, and I decided that I was going to branch out on my own to start this ministry, Patchwork Heart Ministry, to inspire young people. And I didn't really put an age limit on it, but what I was finding through through all the different ministry that I was doing was that kids were being made to go to Mass by their parents. They were being made to get confirmed by their parents, and they weren't owning their own faith. And I said, what are we going to do for these students when they go to college and they have all these questions? So one of my friends, who's also my podcast host, Ann DeSantis, I kind of posed this question to her. And I said, you know, years ago, I wrote a foreword for a book for college students. And you have any ideas that we can we do with this? And she says, I know exactly what we can do with this. I know two campus ministers, one that's on the Sales University campus and one that's on Lord's University campus. Let's partner with them, get some students and have a conversation about, you know, really staying in, engaged in your faith and what questions do you have on your heart? And that's how this book came to be. And the process was awesome. Great. And I definitely want to talk about that book in a minute. I want to rewind a quick second here to the confirmation issue that you've raised, because I've seen this too many times myself, where confirmation is seen as sort of the final step in the journey. And okay, I'm confirmed. Now I don't even have to go back to youth ministry and, and sometimes not even go back to church. It's, it's like a rite of passage to permission to no longer go to church as an adult. Did you ever see any answer to that question or, or or even identify what the problem was? You know, I, I think it's a multi-layered issue. Number one, I think it's a huge lack of catechesis of the students' parents that are that are coming because oftentimes what would happen is mom and dad would literally tell students, I had them come into me and, and students tell me that they were doing this to get a new car. That is totally the wrong reason, you know, to be doing this. And so what I tried in that confirmation year was just flood them with an experience of Jesus Christ. It was really experiential Catholicism, very, very palpable spiritual exercises that would allow the students to encounter Jesus. And then once you encounter who he is and, and you realize that he is real and he is who he says he is, they don't want to leave and they want more of him and they want to go to church. When you talk about the youth experiencing Christ, especially as teenagers in high school, actually having that experience, I think is almost everything and, and to them, you know, as, as teenagers. And I remember back, you know, I was one of the people, although I did leave the church for a few years uh, in my teenage years, I left and became a Protestant and uh, went to a Bible church for a while before I came back to the Catholic church. I didn't leave to, you know, just stop going to church. But for me, my youth group did give me that experience. And I, I look back on my time and like, I never wanted to leave God. I mean, when I've strayed away from God, it's always been reluctantly and, you know, regretfully and, wanting to come back. But, you know, what do you say to the parent whose 16 year old son or daughter comes and says, you know what, mom, I just don't want to go to church anymore. Are you going to force me to go against my will? Yeah. Yeah. What do you say to that? Wow. And I have encountered that. Let's just say I have encountered that. And each situation was vastly different when I encountered that. I think you got to read the situation really well and really honestly sit down with both the parent and the student and say, what's going on here? What is behind this? Because I don't know your family dynamic. I can't tell you where things are going haywire. But if you can highlight some of that for me, you know, you don't have to spill all your dirty laundry, but but just give me an idea of, of what's going on. Then I think you can find some mutual understanding. And that and that ha that's happened to me at a pizza restaurant before out, out with students and you know families and kids wanting to run away and all kinds of crazy stuff. But I think that if you address that personally with them and, and you talk about, hey, listen, this is not about checking some box at the end of the year, because having some oil rubbed on your head that doesn't really mean anything to you isn't going to, you know, if they say, hey, you know what, I want to wait an extra year because I'm not sure if I want this, then by all means, mom, it's okay to let them wait that year. I, I've done that too. I've sponsored kids. <laughs> 
There was one that didn't want to do it at all. I didn't like the situation he was in in junior year. And he came back senior year and said, I think I want to do this now. Can you sponsor me? Can I, can you be my confirmation sponsor? I said, absolutely. You know, and guess where he is now? He is a, uh, he, he's a, uh, a seminarian for the priesthood. Wow. Like you said, you know, if you've got the 16 year old and you try to force them to go to church, even if they comply, which <laughs> they might not, um, <laughs> but even if they do, they're going to go off to college. And I guess that sort of then leads us to sort of why you founded Patchwork. Can you, um, be, before you tell us about the book a little bit, can you tell us a little bit about what exactly is Patchwork Ministry? Yeah, so Patchwork Heart Ministry is uh, a ministry that I founded. I was at this youth conference, actually, with a bunch of high school students. And what ended up happening was the Holy Spirit said, I want you to start this ministry, Bill. And I said, I'm just a little humble youth minister. Please leave me alone. And the Holy Spirit wouldn't leave me alone all day. Uh, so finally, I quipped back at him and I said, I'll tell you what, you give me a name, I'll start the ministry. So I'm on the ride home from this youth conference. <laughs> And I'm praying the last decade of the rosary in the car with the kids. And God goes, patchwork heart ministry. And it meant a ton to me because I'm a survivor of three open heart surgeries. I literally have patches sewn into my heart. And so I was like, I knew God was serious. You know what I mean? Because that name didn't just drop out of the sky and, and have no meaning for me. So I was like, okay, God, I'll get the website uh, tomorrow. <laughs> and so so I got the website, you know, patchworkheart.org in 2012, but I really didn't do too much with it because I was working in youth ministry. I had no idea what God wanted me to do. Uh, and through life's twists and turns, through my own discernment in the priesthood, uh, I'm now happily married with a three-month-old at home. But, but through life's twists and turns, he said, here, 2018, now it's time to go full bore and really do this ministry. So that's how it came to be. All right. And who is the recipient of your ministry? Who's your target audience? I like to think of ourselves as divine physician assistants. So all people with broken hearts, and we all have a broken heart, right? Mine might be a physical broken heart that's been patched up, but everybody has some area of their heart that they have not yet surrendered to the divine physician for healing. So anybody that is listening to that message can find hope. However, I like to think that I channel my efforts into young people's hearts. So college, uh, young adults mainly, but again, they, but it can kind of differ. I've had 55-year-olds say, oh man, I'm really inspired by this message in this story. And I've had the preteens look at it and go, wow, you know, okay, I'm really inspired by this message. So kind of both. All right. And so you've mentioned the book a few times. Let's, uh, let me hear a little bit about what is this book? Yeah, so um, I, I'm really excited about this. And the reason I'm so excited about it is because of the process that we went through. So during the pandemic in 2020, we, we met with five students weekly about the questions that were on their hearts. The things that mattered to them, we put them in a Google Doc and four authors, myself, Ann DeSantis, Jen Southerton, now Jen Oakley, she just got married, and uh, Maggie Riggins answered these questions, but the way we answered them was that we walked with these students each week, much like the road to Emmaus, and that's where we get the title for our book, We're Not Our Hearts Burning Within Us, is one of the lines from the Emmaus story. And what was so interesting was the students would come with a question, everything from the magisterium of the church and its validity, all the way down to, can I smoke marijuana? <laughs> and we would discuss these questions. And each week we would go in this Google Doc, we'd reply, and then there'd be another question. Well, because you answered it this way, I've got this question. And because you answered it this way, I've got this one. And we found ourselves just taking this beautiful path with these students that deepened their faith and our faith. I, you know, I like to say Jesus showed up on the road to Emmaus for us. We took that conversation. We lightly edited it out of the Google Doc, uh, trying to keep the same spirit and the same vibe of our conversation, I would say. And then we put it into uh, a book form. And so it's for all students. I like to say it would be the ideal person to receive this would be like a graduating senior from high school. As they're getting ready to go off to school, I would tell people, get this book, send it with your student. And it's okay if they're on fire for their faith. And it's okay if they're not, because we didn't write this. We didn't write this like, okay, this is only for on fire high schoolers. Right. And you know, you sent me a copy of this in advance. And I, I will say the way you've laid out the book, it's very accessible. I think, you know, each one has a chapter with a very simple title and a, a question that is the kinds of questions that you expect to hear from uh, people this age. And your answers are usually, you know, two to three pages long and, uh, and very direct. And so I could see how if, if you were a college student or a high school student, even 
interested in receiving this information, you've really put it in a nice, uh, nice work. So this is a book that you are, are distributing to uh, folks. How are you getting this to people? Um, you know, it's really a grassroots effort. You know, I would say reach out on my website. Uh, it's also through a wonderful publisher, Karis Publishing. I think it's karispublishing.com. You can order a copy there. You can also order a copy through my website, patchworkheart.org, but really a grassroots effort to get the word out. So I appreciate you uh, having me on today to talk a little bit about ministry and the book, because just getting the word out about it and letting people know, hey, you know, this is a great thing for your, you know, graduating high school student or your current college student to pick up. You know, many Catholic college students that don't maybe have the resources of going to a Catholic college like I did or going to a big school with a big Newman Center on campus. So with that being said, you know, what are you going to give them? How are you going to get that in their in their hands, uh, right. you know, the faith in their hands? So that's the kind of this resource. And as far as actually getting out to college campuses, is that something that your ministry does at all? Or how do you interact personally with college students? Uh, it's something we want to do so desperately. I'll tell you, my good friend and I, Ray Haywood, uh, have a wonderful presentation for college students called Thy Kingdom Come. It's actually up on YouTube. You can go to our YouTube channel and check it out. It's a two-part uh, series, two so two hours long, and we talk with college students live at a uh, church from the Catholic Campus Ministry in Charlotte, North Carolina. And so we, we spoke to a bunch of UNC students, and it's very, very cool, uh, our conversation with them. And we want to be able to get on to college campuses and inspire kids and answer their questions and talk with them about how to you know remain Catholic while you're in school uh, so I'm real excited about the possibilities there and if anybody is listening to this and certainly wants us to come out um, you can first go and watch the presentation on YouTube we made it free and publicly accessible to anybody and if it's something that interests you or even uh, you know we can tailor it to your own audience Right. So important to have these campus ministers out there, I think. Let me ask you kind of a series of things. So you get a parent and their question to you is, what can I do as a parent or a grandparent when my kid goes off to college to, you know, maximize the chances that they will be able to stay in the faith? Is there anything they can do? I'd say really love them and provide them your faith example during this period of life. One of the big things that always happened for me when I was in school was that when I came home, it was non-negotiable. We were going to church. Anytime that I'm, to this day, anytime that I'm under my dad's roof, we go to mass. We're, we're all as a family going to church. I think that's really important. The other thing is drop the faith in the mail. And I, I mean that, you know, my mom would constantly send me articles. She would constantly send me spiritual packets, rosaries, wh whatever it is. Hey, I was hey, was at this parish mission at, at our church, and here is this, you know, what do you think of this? I, I think just continually dropping that, grandparents, parents, continually dropping the faith in, because college kids might be wavering in and out. They may not be, you know, 100% sold, but man, when they when they pick up that mail, you know, from the, from the mail, and they're like, oh, there's not just uh, all the candy that mom normally sends. There's also a rosary in here. There's also some, you know, letter or something, you know, that, that's spiritually uplifting. That makes all the difference, I think, for parents and grandparents to really help their kids stay on that path uh, without being too pushy, without saying, hey, you know what, you got to go to mass because you're because you're living underneath my roof now because they're not. That's a great answer. But I, I keep going back to and you mentioned in your family, that's a non-negotiable. You have to go to church. I know some families that have done that. But then, you know, isn't that sort of then forcing them to do something against their will? And, and how do you deal with the kid who's like, well, then I won't come home? Or why are you making me do this? You know, uh, you know, I'm not a little kid anymore. I don't want to go to church. Certainly, a few of my other siblings did a uh, little bit of pushback. It was it was always this this is love kind of thing. There's there's nothing greater than having an encounter with love. And even one of them who would push back a little bit realized that everybody else is going. So we ought to be here as a family. It wasn't it wasn't this. Oh my gosh, I'm just going to some you know dictatorship that I'm living. You know, we're probably going to go out to breakfast, and Dad's probably going to buy afterwards. So let me just hop in the car here. And the, the other thing I'm thinking my family too was that it was always reasonable on the time that we could go. So like you know we would have a conversation like if we're going to be out, do you want to go Saturday night? If we're going to be out late Saturday night, do you want to go early Saturday? Go to the 4 p.m. mass and then go out late or go out to a concert or whatever, and then we don't have to get up at 7 a.m. to go to the 7 a.m. mass in the morning. Uh, so so I think being flexible and again just being really joyful and living your faith is going to help those moments go a lot easier you know, when, when somebody does give you pushback. 
All right, great. And let me ask this other question then. So you were a youth minister. What do you say to youth ministers or catechists or even pastors who now the kids have gone off to college? Uh, Obviously, they can pray for those kids uh, for sure. Uh, Is there anything that those folks can do once the kids have left the program and gone on to college that might maximize the chances of that kid staying with the faith? Yeah, absolutely. You know, especially during summertime, I would always welcome them back. And we had RE, like summer Bible school, right? A lot of college students sitting at home or working only part time over the summer. We got them involved in that stuff. And they'd be happy to do it because some of them were like studying for elementary ed. So they're like, oh man, I can totally do this. I'm totally happy. Can you give me some letter of recommendation or credit for this? Absolutely, we can help. The other thing I think is really big is getting them involved in those summer trips. A lot of times they can become chaperones, you know, quote unquote, maybe not legally, but they can come with you and be an older voice and an older example to some of those uh, incoming freshmen. So getting them involved, keeping them on those summer trips, uh, so very important to uh, their their own faith building. And it also shows that the parish cares about them and that they're, that they're members of something greater. Uh, so just reaching out and saying, hey, you know what, I know you're home and let's just go out and have a cup of coffee and understand, you know, how the summer's going for you and see if you want to be a part of things here at the parish or whatever. And I think if you do those things, you're going to have a much more engaged young adult base in your parish. And you don't have to be, you know, you don't have to be uh, worried about, you know, trying to funnel them into some program they just want to be involved like if re isn't for them and summer bible camp isn't for them maybe going on a mission trip for two weeks is and you know you don't have to worry about them being there every week or showing up for everything but what what can you plug them into great all right so as we begin to wrap up then uh, what can uh, folks do to help your ministry uh, if they're interested connect with us. Listen to our radio shows and podcasts. We just started uh, a couple of weeks ago doing video podcasts uh, on YouTube. So uh, we have a podcast called Sowing Hope. We also have another one called Young Catholics Respond. They're on Breadbox Media. Of course, we love to hear from people. You know, reach out to us. The email is very simple. Info at patchworkheart.org. You know, feel free to email us and uh, we're happy to come on out to your parish. We're happy to come on out, give a talk at a, uh, you know, Newman Center, whatever uh, we can do to help support you and your ministries. I think that's really the big thing. We we know you cannot do everything. Use our ministry to help you grow the faith of those that have been trusted to you. All right. And I will have a link to your website with the podcast on my website. If anybody uh, wants to reach out to Patchwork Heart Ministry. Final parting words for folks who are listening. Any uh, any advice or, or thoughts you'd like to leave them with? Don't give up. We all have struggles. Every single one of us has struggles. Every one of us has a broken heart in some way. The divine physician wants to heal you. The divine physician wants to enter into your life and be your best friend and walk with you. So don't give up and just know, and like I always say, I'm living proof of it. Our broken heart still beats, it still works, and can live for for God and for Christ and make it to heaven. Thank you, Bill, for being on the show today, and uh, may God bless your ministry. Tony, thank you so much. It was an honor and pleasure. entertainment segment today, I'll be discussing the new hit biblical series on the life of Jesus, The Chosen, and especially Christmas with the Chosen, released in theaters through Fathom events in December and now streaming free online. We've been talking about how to reach college students, while The Chosen television series seems to be doing just that. The series started in 2017 with one pilot episode directed by Dallas Jenkins, who is the mastermind behind the series. It has now gone for two seasons with eight episodes per season. It's the first time there's ever been a multi-season television show about Jesus, and it has really taken the world by storm. And in fact, it became in 2019 the top crowdfunded film project in history. It's been seen by over a billion people worldwide. The plan is to have seven seasons of the series. This Christmas, the producers of The Chosen released an episode called The Messengers, and it became the largest release ever for Fathom Events as it hit over 1,700 theaters across the nation. I went to see it myself this past week, and I was expecting a two-hour Christmas movie 
I was a little surprised that what I got was an hour and a half of a video rock concert of Christian artists singing both original and classic Christmas songs, and then about a 35-minute episode with Mary and Joseph traveling into Bethlehem, juxtaposed against Mary in her old age, getting the text of the Magnificat to the evangelist Luke, author of the Gospel of Luke. This is an hour and a half of music with some narrative kind of setting you up for the episode, the 35-minute episode. And they have all sorts of big names in Christian music. Phil Wickham, Matt Mayer, Jordan Felice, Leanna Crawford. We have Maverick City Music, Catholics, Protestants, and it's very much packaged to appeal to young people, especially young college people. I think it's the kind of show that would appeal to young Christians, people who are open to the gospel message, open to the Christian faith, open to the Christmas story. The Chosen series itself is very interesting because the producers have attempted to bridge the gap between Catholics and Protestants by bringing in consultants of all different denominational backgrounds in the hopes of making the series not only interesting, entertaining, and authentic, but also acceptable to Christians and not divisive. And I would say they mostly accomplished that with their Christmas episode. So if you're looking for a lot of excellent Christian music, with some very moving narratives about God in preparation for Christmas, followed by an episode of The Christmas Story. I would definitely recommend for you Christmas with the Chosen. And in any event, if you're looking for what's going to be an ongoing series about the life of Jesus, packaged in a way that is very contemporary and accessible to both young and old, I would recommend The Chosen. That's all the time we have for the show today. We spoke with Bill Snyder, the founder of Patchwork Heart Ministry, and we talked about how we can encourage our young people when they go off to college to keep the faith and remain on the right path. And in the entertainment review segment, I discussed the hit series The Chosen and focused on Christmas with The Chosen, the holiday movie event. Again, this is Anthony Barone Kolank, and this has been The Shepherd's Pie. If any of you listening today have a question for me or a topic you'd like to have us cover on the show, please drop me a line on my website at antonycolank.com. That's A-N-T-O-N-Y-K-O-L-E-N-C.com. Also, if you visit my website, you can learn more about my historical fiction series for kids, The Harwood Mysteries. I'll end, as always, with my wife's favorite scripture quote from Romans 8, 28. We know that all things work for good to those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. May the Lord bless and keep you this week.